Diesel generators are still used for various tasks around the world and from a renewable energy perspective it's back up on the grid and it's the fossil fuel component with most off-grid systems. But what if you don't want to use diesel? Are there viable alternatives? And the answer to that question is a, a resounding yes and that's what we're going to look at in this presentation. What we're talking about here is diesel designed his engines not to just run on a fossil fuel, but to actually run on a variety of vegetable oils depending on their viscosity, and we'll talk about that later. In the Marshall Islands, there's a company that has used 100% coconut oil in ships with 1,000 horsepower engines, and that's fairly substantial, all the way down to five horsepower generators. Now, with all oils, viscosity is of concern. And the more viscous, in other words, sticky and gluey, the more potential issues using oils as a fuel, uh, especially when it comes to the fuel line. With coconut oil, um, issues are as follows. Now, the problem is that coconut oil starts to solidify below 25 degrees C. But that's not a problem, obviously, on many tropical islands. So by carefully filtering the coconut oil of its excess moisture, in other words, removing it, the oil worked perfectly in many diesel engines. Now, coconut oil can be blended with diesel or used straight in an adapted engine or turned into da-da biodiesel. Now, because of higher specific density and slightly lower energy content, specific fuel consumption using coconut oil is generally 8% higher. Now, some say that using more than 20% coconut oil in a motor is potentially detrimental to the engine, but this hasn't been proven, so it's more opinion than fact. Coconut oil is up to 30 times more viscous than regular diesel, so it requires some kind of heating element, and this applies to other vegetable oils with the use of a preheater being essential if you're going to run the engine purely off a coconut vegetable oil um, situation. Most adaption includes a start and stop on regular diesel. So just picture this, when the engine gets up to operating temperature, the fuel switches to coconut oil and just before shutting down, switches back to diesel. Now it's also possible to adapt the fuel system to start and stop on pure vegetable coconut oil as well but obviously that would require a preheater. Effectively, they're at a containment system that allows the collection and then subsequent breakdown of organic waste via an anaerobic process into various useful compounds. They facilitate the anaerobic breakdown of organic matter, which produces biogas and also produces a digestate. So this biogas concept is fairly simple. Effectively on the home base system, but it's the uh, commercial system works the same way. If you have a co collection point where you put in organic matter, whether that's animal manure, scraps from your garden, or scraps from your dinner. It, f it falls down into this chamber here. After you put your stuff in it, it seals up, you seal it up. And then the microbes, those hard workers that they are, they do their process anaerobically, in other words, in a very low oxygen environment, ideally no oxygen. They do their thing, and in the process, um, the biogas is produced. And the biogas, somehow through a valve, uh, goes up, and because it's lighter than air, gathers at the top of this inflatable bag. So effectively the home system is made out of a re, um, recycled um, plastic that's got a, a life of about 15 years but eventually breaks down completely so it's biodegradable. It's imagine like a large balloon so it starts filling up. Now on top of this biogas when it starts to fill up you've got a system of um, sandbags that they place over. The sandbags compress the gas down and then the only way the gas can go out is out through a pipe that they, pro they provide with the kit to your portable gas, the biogas cooker, where you can cook your food in a mutated kind of wok. So what are some of the products of the end result of this process? Well effectively biogas is the main one, basically methane. Uh, also liquid-based fertiliser, 
solid fertiliser and soil amendment, and also fibre-based products. In regards to the use of the biogas, you're talking about heating and cooling, you're talking about running generators, and there is cases of cars running on the biogas. What I love about it is it, it is taking something that was not considered a resource, it's reducing the amount of methane that is contributing to uh, the greenhouse effect, and you're actually producing something useful out of it, and at the same time you're also producing a fertiliser that can be used to improve soil and soil structure. It's, it's just, a, it's wonderful. Biodigesters can have a residential application, definitely. There are home biogas systems sold in Australia. These are kit systems that come as, along with the bladder, a portable gas cooker. And they claim for every two kilogram of organic waste, you get about an hour or so of cooking time. There are some commercial applications where piggeries have used uh, very large um, generators for their electrical needs uh, and running them totally off the, uh, the pig gas, the biogas from the piggery.